Hi, my name is Greg Suddy. This is Suddy on Soccer, and we are talking to Jacques Ladesseur. Jacques Ladesseur is going to be bringing out a new book, Raising a Professional Athlete. We've been covering a number of, a number of different uh, subjects. Today, we're talking about finance, Jacques. Let's, uh, let's just sort of open the door on what finance is going to be talking about for the kids. Well, the finance, the finance piece for the kids is, is very interesting because this mainly, this mainly reflects on the parent. This is mainly the parent's job. Yeah. to do it because nobody else could do it. I right. Mean, we talked before, you talked about the coaches, but nobody else can really do it. The this. school's not doing it. The That's coaches right. don't have a chance. That's right. So it really is on the parents' shoulders to cover this, as it should be. I mean, the kids are growing up and we need to teach them about how to run and deal with money. Yeah, and that's correct. And and we've all seen it. I mean, we all know someone, right? Yeah. Uh, or an athlete or an entertainer that's squandered millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Uh, and uh, and the question we always ask is, man, how did they do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he lost in a month what I make in a lifetime. <laughs> I mean, I heard of a guy who went to a restaurant and spent forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand dollars. It's like, wow, that's incredible. But it happens. It happens. Yeah. And it happens because of their relationship with money, right. how it started, and what they learned about it. Right. It's very, very important. So that's the big thing. So now you've got three subjects, sort of key issues, working for money. Correct. Saving money. Correct. And investing money. Correct. So let's talk about working for money. Well, uh, obviously, working for money with the kids, there's a lot of different things you could, you could have them do. Right. But for me personally, I had my daughter, I paid my daughter $5 to read books, right? So books that I've read, and I think that would be very helpful to her. So she read the book and it took her about a month. You know, every month she, after she read her book, I paid her $5. Wow. So that's, that, I like that because I mean, that's, I mean, typically you think of, you know, $5 to mow the lawn, a buck to take out the trash, $2 Correct. to do the dishes, Correct. you know, but this is unique because it's, this, this adds that lesson that all those other ones do, right. but it also goes one step further because you, the kid's learning from the book. Correct. And then you have conversation about it or what? We do, and and these are not school books, by the way. The okay. school books are completely separate. Gotcha. That's, that's She doesn't get paid for that. She okay. just does everything else. But uh, we do have conversations with it. And one of the things that we do, going back and forth, she was a gymnast, she played soccer. You can have these conversations with your, with, with your kids about the project that you're doing in your car instead of criticizing them of the mistakes they made on the field, on the court, wherever, oh, as far wait, as playing wow. sports. So we had those conversations. Yeah. And and at the end of at the end at the end when she read the book, she just had to do a summary of the book. Okay. Give me a one paragraph summary of the book, what she learned, what she thought of it, and then we'd go from there. We discuss the book that way. So okay. there's working for money. Correct. Now let's talk a little bit about the saving part. Now what I would also do is that at the end of the month, whatever she saved, I would match it. So if she saved oh, wow. ten dollars, I would give her ten dollars on that. Oh, wow. Right. I give her, I, I'd match her with $10. Now, the, the big thing with that is that she would have to constantly think about spending money. Yeah. Uh, the impulse spending part was basically gone because when she sees something she wants and she says, Dad, can I buy this? I yeah. say, Of course you can buy this. Sure. But if you buy it, just remember whatever you pay for it, then whatever you have left in your savings account is what I'm going to match. Wow. So she would think, Well, if I spend, if I spend $10 on this, I have $20 in my savings account, then my dad is only going to match $10. So why don't I just wait and then my dad can match twenty dollars, I can have more money. That's really that's that's brilliant. The, that's brilliant. Because I mean there's all kinds of extenuating circumstances that go Correct. into thought process. Um, and consequences of, ex of spending money, consequences of not spending money. Correct. Because consequences are both good and bad. Right. I and mean, they're just, that's the result of what you did. Right. And um, so there's good here, there's bad here, there's, you know, benign. I mean, it's like, she, this is what she wanted to do. She got what she wanted and she made the applicable conversation within herself right. of, of how she wanted to play this out. Right. And now she's getting less money at the end. So there's investment. That's not just savings. That's savings and investment Correct. and the whole conversation. That's very brilliant. I like that. Correct. Because now she's free. I, I'm not, I'm not pressing. I'm not saying right. to you, you can't have this or you can't. Right. Have that. Right. I'm not the mean parent. Right. I'm just saying to her, look, if you buy this, then this is what's going to happen. Yes, you can buy it. Now you have to think about, do I really need this? So now, because we're talking about younger kids, um, primarily what age group would you we're say? We're talking about between eight and 12 eight years and 12 old. Eight and 12 years old. Yeah. So, right the, so, the, so the credit conversation really doesn't need to be had right no, here. No, not yet. Because okay. that's the basic foundation sure. that you're trying to teach them. Right, right, right. Process. Okay. That will eventually come to play. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you mentioned earlier the investment of time. Correct. So, so this was really cool because you've got, you've, you've taught the kid money. 
You taught the kid saving money, Correct. working for money. Right. You, you've given this, this, this thought process of investment, and now you have this time going back and forth to, to, to practice right. or, or, or preparing for practice right. or even, even just kicking the ball back and forth on the, on the front lawn you know, on your own. Right, right, you have right. this time to, to talk to the kid about what my investment is into what you're doing. Correct. And there's a money part of this. I mean, the gas costs money and all that kind of thing. The, the, it costs money to sign you up for the for for the for, for, for the your team. league for your team. Right, right. Yeah. But there's also time is money. Right. So my time is worth something, and I'm making an investment in my kid's time. This is what you can expect from me, son. What can I expect from you? And what right. is that going to be? Right. One hundred percent. One hundred percent effort. Now, when you teach your kids about money, about working then it's much easier for them to make the connection yes of what you're doing uh, when they don't know that it's very hard for them to make the connection right because they they don't know about you all the time you spend working and, and making money right and it's, it is important for the kid to go on the field and give everything they got to be coachable to be respectful all these other things that we talked about that's right to present themselves in a way where the coach can actually teach them so they can succeed and that's very important right now the other thing is if a parent does not teach the kids about money and the kid eventually one day might be one of those guys who squander millions. Right. Well, we're talking about raising a professional athlete here. Right. So, right. so we're sort of implying right. that you're going to get that paycheck. Well, so yeah. now that's what we're doing here. And then think about it. I mean, I, and if you watch, you watch TV, you watch athletes on TV. And one of the things they always say is, I want to buy my mom a house. I mm. want to buy my dad this. I want to do those things. And if the kid is not taught how to manage money, how to run their life, then basically it's going to affect the parent at some point of maybe not getting some big reward that the kid wanted to give to them. So now we also, we mentioned the credit is a little ahead of this conversation. Right. Another thing that I just want to mention real quickly that probably is ahead of the conversation also, but something to consider going forward is relationships with people. Once you've gotten to that point, you know, as an athlete, right. you're an older person now, you're in your late teens, early twenties, you've gotten that contract, you've made it, but you've got all these old relationships of people that didn't make it maybe. Right, right. And, and, and that's part of knowing money is how to deal with once I have this and going forward. But like I said, that's a little ahead of this conversation. That is a little ahead. You yeah. Know, um, if, if you're gonna be successful, it's always gonna, it, one of the biggest things is the people you surround yourself with. Yeah, absolutely. That's the biggest thing. Absolutely. And, and they, they, they will make you or break you, whether you're in school, whether you're, whether you're on the field, whether you're on the court, whatever sport you play, Whoever you surround yourself with, will you make your break? So I would imagine, I mean, in your own career, that uh, that your, your experience that you're sharing here earlier about the guy that blew out forty thousand dollars—that's probably just one example. Oh, that's a very uh, small uh, yeah. of, a, of a bad thing. But, but you right. also probably were in company with people that were doing it right. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. And typically, what I notice is the ones that were doing it right. It's they got it from their parents. Mm. They, they grew up with it. Mm -hmm. And then of course, there's always a few people that over a period of time and during the, the course of their careers, maybe they had another athlete on their team that kind of helped them and Good. mentored them. Right. And then there's other people that really figured it out. But yeah. I mean, yeah. but the larger percentage it's starting of people right here. that did not get it from a young age, right. they lose it. Yeah, so it starts right here, guys. Uh, moms and dads, th this conversation, so many of the conversations that we have in this series can, can go to the coaches, can go to the kids themselves, but this one is really powerfully directed right at the parents. Correct. All right, Jacques Ladisseur, thanks for joining me today. Raising a professional athlete, Jacques Ladisseur. It's been great sharing with you today. This has been a passion of mine for such a long time. You can contact me in the email below and also purchase the books in the links below.